नमस्ते वेलकम टू खेती वाला डायलॉग नंबर 16 दिस फ्राइडे इवनिंग एट 6:30 इट स्टार्ट्स वी वेटेड अ फ्यू मोर मिनट्स सो दैट वी हैव लॉट ऑफ रजिस्टर्ड पार्टिसिपेंट्स वेयर एंड स्पिटिंग देयर अराइवल इन द मेन वाइल निहारिका विल इंट्रोड्यूस मी फॉर 1 मिनट एंड देन पुट अप द स्लाइड फॉर इंट्रोड्यूसिंग खेती वाला Thereafter, our speaker of the day, Dr. Shobha Nagmur, will lead us with the discussion on urban gardening. So, at the very outset, before we get started, today's Times Techies page thirteen uh, has uh, mention of the terminal um, uh, terminal two in uh, Bangalore International Airport. They have beautiful bell shaped. Uh, uh vertical garden they have actually kept lot of greenery there as you could see they are not plastic it's real and they use technology like iot and sensors then micronutrients it will sense and then feed it as per the requirement they are also doing more such innovations so the topic of the day is very important and pertinent i'll spend 7 minutes to introduce kethiwala and connect with the speaker so that directly you can interact with the speaker one housekeeping request to all attendees is keep your mobile in mute mode end of the session uh, do attend to question answers that others are asking attentively so that you can also participate and whatever comes in the chats uh, just absorb it there may be a feedback form or an announcement about tomorrow's ketiwala uh, uh, dialogue about vegetables so with these few words ketiwala is uh, connecting uh, farmers to far dreamers the word is to indicate those farmer like people who are uh, interested to become farmers but right now they may be a, a space scientist or a pilot or some advocate somewhere in the world but interested in india somewhere um, the agriculture an uh, area they have an area of interest maybe cultivable land they have we when we connect people who are like farmers with these people uh, we accomplish the synergy between them so uh, we have lot of empathy and then uh, we we respect farmer because we all get food on our table so with that grand gesture of gratitude we have started this ketiwala and uh, Uh, with so many activities like next slide please one of them is uh, an app android app right now don't try to download there is some um, version 2 evolving so we will reconfirm to you so we just temporarily uh, stopped uh, access to you and the google takes couple of days to keep it open to everyone so just uh, mm-hmm. we are in that stage so it's a one stop solution where we have the niveshaks who are investors on the one hand and the farmers on the other hand we connect both of them and we provide some financial support to farmers with a consideration of between the niveshak and farmer there will be an understanding instead of taking money farmer may want to give the produce a share of the produce so we just want to create a healthy interaction between them next slide please not only that it's like a one stop shop with all these eight different uh, activities we would like to uh, make the farmer empowered and equipped so that uh, their activities are uh, profit making like a return on investment we want to make farmer as a entrepreneur so i will elaborate each one in a few words as it is written in the exact order it offers a seamless platform to farmers to sell produce so kethi corner is like a shop where farmer will have a d2c direct to consumer cutting the middleman so that is one of the stated purposes next is kethi kendra where we have a few mandals are selected where we can get valuable insights on modern practices receive guidance and latest technology etc kethi kalyan as i mentioned already uh, it's like a marriage between uh, the the farmer and niveshak and interaction between them kethi wala magazine which is like um, uh, we have a dialogue we have kethi wala agri news which is on youtube channel even our dialogue is also going to be available there 
Kethi Purashkar is recognizing people who contribute to agriculture. Kethi Summit is where we have a big event where uh, we connect with the manufacturing companies and um, involve them in um, uh, those who are helping in the agriculture those who produce the right tools for the farming based on the current requirements. KT Dialogue, we are already doing in five different languages. English is the first one that we are doing today. This is the 16th edition. And we also have Telugu, Tamil, uh, and uh, we have um, um, Marathi and Gujarati also starting. Hindi is there and many other languages coming up. Keti Kosha is like uh, India has 179.9 million hectares of land. Some of those land uh, owners who are in abroad, maybe Canada or USA or UK, they may want to have some people who are um, capable of cultivating. So we connect a small farmer with this uh, piece of land. Again, uh, we don't do it like a lifetime. We do it on a session basis and uh, improvise the effectiveness and time to time. Next slide, please. We also do many other things such as uh, bringing to the farmer the bore well facility or some uh, buyers and auctions, machinery, spare parts. We provide guidance and support and train the farmers. We provide seeds, crops, and uh, do smart farming using drones. And uh, we also help them to get fertilizers and pesticides and for financial support as well. Yesterday's episode was Agriculture Infrastructure Fund. One second, let me admit four people. We have KV Dialogues wherein we are able to, we are going to see some professionals who joined us already and uh, from different agri companies and uh, uh, government agencies and universities like the MAM today, the speaker is a Dean of Agriculture University. We have a magazine, it's a bi-monthly in English and also bringing up in other languages such as Telugu and other uh, Tamil languages. And uh, we have interesting topics like Agri-Queen and farmer producing organizations focus. There is a quiz program for children to get everyone interested in this. Uh, agriculture is no more boring. It's going to be very high technology going forward. So uh, what we want is to... In the KT corner, we, we provide opportunity like within five kilometers range to the farmer, uh, not to disturb the farmer. We provide services to them that what they really require and take care of customers, uh, the farmer's needs, uh, treating farmer as a customer. Next slide, please. This is me. I contributed to Agriculture Standard of Bureau of Indian Standards, a book that is uh, officially kept. Uh, document number 17799 pdf file which is in monarch database and also i wrote a chapter on precision farming with uh, uh, dr uh, gayatri and dr suba of um, sudha of um, amity university Lucknow. Next slide, please. These are great professionals. Uh, hats off to them, uh, right from ISRO or IISC Bangalore, um, Market Federation Managing Director, then uh, IFCO South India Managing Director, so many other professionals like doctorates. As I said, I co authored book chapter with Dr. Gayatri. Many have patents in their respective domains of agriculture and they have given their knowledge and expertise and uh, spoke. Uh, in our uh, KV dialogue so far. And uh, the list will continue. Today's Dr. Shobha Nagnur, former Dean of uh, uh, Agriculture Science University at Harvard. Uh, she will uh, bring to us the concept of urban gardening. She's a very passionate uh, horticulturist and every day she writes and uh, she lives with the subject matter she speaks about and she has done research in that area. And urban Home gardening is transforming and evolving from traditional pots on uh, window sills to innovative solutions that make greener living spaces accessible to everyone. Whether you have a tiny balcony, etc., please go to the previous slide for just one minute. Or a small yard or just a window sill. Window sill you the latest trends in the urban gardening invite nature back to our urban homes, creating uh, oases of tranquility and beauty. So without much delay. 
today. So I would uh, request uh, Dr. Uh, Shobha Nagnu to lead us with her discussions. Soon after her talk, there will be a question answer session and also feedback session. So her presentation is like 21 slides. Typically, our program runs for one hour. Based on the question answer, we might stretch to a little bit more than a total one hour. Thank you very much. And uh, the, the session is open to you, ma'am. You can lead us. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure being with all of you this evening. And uh, first of all, I should thank the organizers, Flight Lieutenant Katie Kishore and uh, Mr. Lakshman for having invited me uh, to come on this uh, dialogue of Ketiwala. And uh, I also thank the audience for taking time to join this Zoom meeting where I'm going to share my experiences uh, and whatever little knowledge I have about gardening. Then all of us together, I think we should thank the organizers for this wonderful topic on innovations in urban gardening. This urban gardening or gardening is not new to human beings. It is the innate characteristic of human beings to connect with nature. And uh, so we have seen that uh, uh, along the civilization, people have been growing some plants. And even if you see in a small house, if they have a very tiny balcony also, they are growing some uh, plants like the Vinca rosia at least. Uh, for the puja or some hibiscus flowers or there is a karipatta in, uh, in the um, uh, pot and depending upon the size and availability of land everybody has some or the uh, other plant. So uh, my, my journey with gardening uh, has been since very long uh, since I was a child I was initiated into gardening by my grandfather and my father and I am lucky to be living on a um, huge garden with lots of greenery and all. So the first slide, what you can see is also a part of my uh, garden. I'm more into ornamental type of uh, gardening because of the huge trees that I have planted by my grandfather. There is hardly any sunlight. So I've taken advantage of that and uh, grown most of the shade loving uh, plants that grow in the forest areas and uh, so my um, garden is like a mini forest or a mini jungle. You can see one of the uh, slides here and uh, uh, today I thought uh, Mr. Kishore has, uh, Dr. Kishore has already uh, told you about how technologies are being used in, uh, in the international airport at Bangalore. Uh, uh, way up you can see those bell-shaped uh, uh, structures on which plants are growing and you see uh, panels and panels of uh, vertical gardens. I'm sure a lot of technology is being used there. But uh, what I thought was, uh, though I am specialized in ornamental uh, gardening, I do grow a little bit of vegetables and it is uh, restricted because of lack of sunlight, of course, in my garden. So I thought today, let me uh, try and uh, focus on urban gardening uh, that is more of vegetable cultivation than the ornamental because the ornamental gardening is more for aesthetics and vegetable gardening is like uh, vegetable gardening is like uh, it is a uh, utility it contributes to the nutrition of the uh, families and um, uh, even the some constructive use of the time uh, of the uh, urban people as well as, um, uh, like I said, nutrition of the uh, family also. So here I thought before I go into actual uh, uh, talking about the vegetable cultivation, I wanted to show you a few pictures of my garden. So here uh, I put three or four slides. So there's lots of greenery and this is how it is even in the summer, probably because of uh, the uh, big trees I have and in the context of climate change also it is very important that we uh, grow vegetables and meet the uh, needs of the uh, growing urban population. So next slide please. You can just show uh, the slides. So these are some uh, arrangements of mine mostly ornamental gardening. Here are some more of them. So coming to the uh, uh, introduction of what is uh, 
what are the innovations and uh, in uh, vegetable cultivation more specifically and why I'm talking about vegetable cultivation uh, is, is that nearly 47% uh, are vegetarians in India and uh, fruits and vegetables form the uh, main diet. Even of the 53% that are considered non-vegetarians, uh, you know how it is in Indian conditions where uh, they don't eat on Tuesdays, some don't eat on Thursdays, some don't eat on Saturdays. So none of them are hardcore non-vegetarians like the uh, those in the Western countries. And mostly all of them are into uh, vegetarian diet only. And you all know how important fruits and vegetables are in the diet. Uh, you require fruits and vegetables for those uh, vitamins and minerals and uh, dietary fiber. Uh, so we will talk more about the uh, cultivation of uh, vegetables in the urban uh, setting and how we can use innovations in growing those vegetables. So here you see that uh, we say that India is predominantly a rural country and in rural areas, both production and consumption centers are in close proximity. The, the exchange rate is direct and hence the cost of transaction is also low. Whereas the urban population in India is now 35% uh, and it is growing. It might reach 50% uh, by 2050. And according to FAO, the present urban population the world over is 55%. So uh, what we mean to say here is that uh, Indian urban population is going to increase and we should be able to meet the needs of this population. See, 70% of all the food that is produced globally is destined for consumption in urban spaces. The food that is produced mostly in rural areas is going to be consumed by 70%. 70% uh, so of the food is going to be consumed by people in urban areas. So since urban consumptions are away from the production centers, the transaction becomes indirect through intermediaries and therefore the cost increases, whether it is for storage or whether it is for transportation or the uh, middlemen, uh, the, the cost for the urban uh, people is much high, whereas at the same time, the farmer also doesn't get what he's supposed to, doesn't earn all their uh, profits. So in India, 17.5% of the world's population lives here, but it has only 2.5% of the global land. And of the third, total of 32.9 million square kilometers of land, 42% is already under agriculture, whereas the global average is 33%. So you'll see that in India, there is not much scope for bringing additional land under agriculture. So whatever land is there, we should try to utilize it to the maximum and uh, get the best out of it. And it is here that the innovations would play uh, an important role. So we have the need for alternate production systems. So understanding what is urban gardening, in simple terms, urban gardening is the raising of green spaces in urban settings. The moment you say urban settings, you know what it is, uh, that here the uh, density of population is very high. There are size skyscrapers and concrete buildings everywhere. So it is the raising of green spaces in such uh, areas. It can be multi-purpose or multi-approach, including all subsectors of agriculture. When we say subsectors of agriculture, it could be uh, small animals and uh, ruminants, a few milch uh, animals, uh, some poultry birds. All of that constitutes agriculture and in urban areas, even uh, some people are growing or uh, cultivating uh, these aspects also. So we can say that urban gardening or urban horticulture or urban agriculture is the process of growing plants of all types in an urban environment or a space. So how do we grow and what are the different things? Uh, we'll just see in the next slides. So what are the types of urban gardening? We can classify them based on the location based on the subsectors of agriculture and the purpose for what we are going to have our uh, garden. So the types of urban garden can be urban gardens and peri-urban gardens, that which is grown in the cities and on the fringes of the cities, you can call it as peri-urban, where the uh, sub-urban areas are there outside the uh, city uh, municipalities and corporations. That is the peri-urban area where there more of land is available 
compared to the heart of the city. So the location is either urban gardens or peri-urban. Then in the subsectors, you have agronomic crops, you have horticulture crops, you have livestock, dairy, poultry, beekeeping, sericulture, you have medicinal and aromatic herbs. So different subsectors are there. Here we will restrict ourselves to horticulture crops and more specifically the vegetable crops. Then for what purpose are we going to go? Whether it is utilitarian uh, for home consumption and local sales. Uh, so uh, in urban gardens, the ornamental garden, like the gardens that I have, are mostly ornamental and for aesthetic purposes. Whereas vegetables become the utilitarian type. And that also you can grow only for home consumption or for local sales in the neighborhood. You can go commercial too on a larger scale. So in urban areas, availability of land for urban gardening. So uh, here comes the innovation uh, here. What we mean is that you can use the space available in the urban areas. We see many vacant pl plots, lands. So what are all the places that we, that we can grow vegetables on? At the individual level, you can have house compounds, your kitchen gardens or the even the small container gardening, your window sills, all those can become for individual purposes. Then you have your terrace or balcony or the rooftop gardening, which is gaining popularity these days. Now many people are having terrace gardens. And then you have these vacant plots. So in some places like Chennai and all, these vacant plots are being uh, taken over by some um, entrepreneurs or uh, garden enthusiasts they pay a nominal rent to the person because anyway, those vacant plots are there. So they will use those vacant plots to grow the vegetables. Sometimes the owners just uh, are ready to give the vacant plots uh, for some vegetables itself. So they uh, don't have to uh, pay rent also. The growers don't have to pay rent and also using of this vacant plots uh, becomes very, um, I mean, like remunerative or you can use these spaces. We see these vacant plots uh, in many of the uh, city areas and we can make best use of them. Then we have public places like municipal gardens, lake beds and river beds. In summer when the water recedes or there is no water on the river beds, those can be utilized to grow vegetables. Uh, one of the advantage of growing vegetables, it is there. Uh, they, uh, within uh, two to three months, you can get the uh, produce. So there is a short time when you can uh, grow them. Uh, even uh, when the lake beds and river beds are dry for a few months, you can take one or two crops of vegetables. Then there are uh, public buildings. It could be government offices. Uh, it could be even those, um, it could be hospitals and such public buildings, wherever there is empty space, they can be used for growing vegetables and land lease. So land lease in the uh, peri-urban areas, there are many people who have uh, small areas of uh, land for agriculture, but they don't do the agriculture. That land can be uh, given on uh, uh, lease and on lease, somebody can take it up and grow the vegetables. Then there are other common places. It may be school, college compounds, school vegetable gardens or school uh, kitchen gardens have become very popular all over the country now. And many schools and colleges are encouraging growing of vegetables. Then you, uh, there are some common spaces like under the flyover. They have taken up ornamental gardening, of course, under the flyovers in uh, Delhi and all. Then there may be worship complexes in the temples or mosques or churches. If there is some extra place, you can use that to grow your vegetables. So all this, this uh, land can be uh, best used for growing of vegetables. Mostly they are left vacant and nothing is grown on them. Uh, so you, we can use all this uh, land for growing vegetables. So with all that land and other resources are constrained in urban areas. That it is because of this that we need uh, technologies. What we are talking today about uh, innovations. Innovations are new ideas or technologies that can be used uh, to get the best out of Mm, what you're trying to do. So the next slide, please. So here I've just put some pictures. You can see some young girls growing some gourds in their uh, uh, school gardens or a lady on a terrace or rooftop 
uh, cultivations. They grow them in grow bags to reduce the weight. And here they have a, a cement, uh, this one. And uh, see, you can see that they have grown, uh, she has grown also gourds there in the uh, background. So uh, some of them have got fruit trees, either they are in containers or directly they have used soil on the rooftops. And here you have uh, common areas. If you have an apartment complex and there's a common area, then all of them can come together. It's a very nice thing for the community to bond and the children and the uh, adults also to bond over uh, gardening. Here there's a picture of lake bed cultivation. This picture is from the uh, Mahanadi River uh, bed of uh, Orissa. So when during summer, when the water recedes down, uh, the tasilars and all lease out that land uh, to these uh, farmers who can uh, grow vegetables. As I said, it is they are short duration crops. Uh, so you can uh, take a lot of vegetables and this is how you can best utilize the spaces. So what are the innovations we can have in urban gardening or urban vegetable gardening? So innovations can be in water management, in land management, technology management, marketing management and resource management. We will see one by one how, uh, how we can manage uh, these things and what are the new ideas or uh, there are some traditional methods also which have gone out of use and we can uh, regenerate them to uh, grow better. So we one by one, we'll see what they are. Next, first is the land management. Innovations in land management, you know now how they are uh, growing hydroponics. Yeah, this is a small structure, uh, a little smaller than these ca can be have, had at uh, home level also. Mostly in, in hydroponics, they grow a lot of uh, leafy vegetables. So these vertical gardens also are hydroponics. Either you can have hydroponics vertical garden or you can have it uh, soil. But as far as possible, they have these um, lightweight, uh, some material instead of the uh, soil, some medium which is light in weight or water they will have for vertical garden. So it can withstand the uh, weight. So hydroponics, here you have uh, aeroponics uh, that uh, grow on uh, air and uh, rooftop uh, gardens, very systematic. A large terrace has been converted to rooftop gardens. This is how we can try and uh, have innovations in land management. When land is a uh, limited resource, it cannot be mm, extended. So these are the ways where we can uh, maximize uh, our production by using land efficiently. Next, please. So again, here we also have these small kitchen gardens, your backyard gardens. They are also the, uh, you can uh, best utilize the uh, land for growing vegetables. Then you have these greenhouse and polyhouse cultivation. It is said that uh, whether it is um, vertical garden or in vertical garden, they say you get at least 15 times uh, more uh, production than in uh, the uh, traditional or uh, normal way that you are cultivating. Similarly, in greenhouse and polyhouse also, they say uh, seven to eight times uh, higher production is uh, there when you use greenhouses or polyhouses. So most of you know what are greenhouses and polyhouses. Greenhouses are uh, those uh, that are mainly made with uh, polycarbonated sheets and uh, it uh, uh, traps the heat inside and uh, providing the ideal conditions for growing the crops, whereas polyhouses are similar to greenhouses, except that the material, which, which what they are made is different. They, they can easily be dismantled and uh, uh, put up. Greenhouses have a lot of investment. Polyhouses have uh, less, less investment. So greenhouse and polyhouse also, uh, since the conditions can be controlled in these greenhouses and polyhouses, the production and yields are the very high, these are now gaining popularity. Then there is this aquaponics. Aquaponics is you grow uh, vegetables with hydroponics and then you also have the fish growing there along with your uh, vegetables. So two things you can have, you can have uh, fish as well as the vegetables in the same place. So this is how we can try and use uh, the land to the maximum. Next one. Then we have innovations in water management. Instead of 
uh, having this flooding type of uh, irrigation. You can have uh, drip irrigations. That's nothing new, but that is how you, you can save your water. Mulching is another form. You cover the soil surfaces with the uh, agriculture waste material or you even have these uh, plastic sheets for mulching. But uh, we prefer uh, to have these uh, agriculture waste so that that will uh, get converted to um, organic matter and add to the quality of the soil. Then water plants only when your plants need them. Water them only when your plants need them. See, uh, I can talk this. Uh, I can talk about this with my experience in ornamental gardening. Most of the people kill their plants uh, by overwatering their plants. So uh, even now, in the hottest of the summer, I water my plants only once in two days, and uh, there's nothing um, harmful happens if you don't water them uh, for a day. That way, we are also conserving water and. Uh, when I'm talking about innovations in water management, it's not only for commercial purpose I'm talking. Uh, you can also think about how you can save water in your house. The kitchen water is used. What you use your wash, wash the rice and dal, the same water can be used. You can always have a, a tub where you wash your hands and all in the kitchen and you can use that water. And these days I've been using the water that I get from the um, AC. So by the by morning time, I have two buckets full of water that is dripped from the uh, AC. Uh, uh, so I can use that water to water my balcony garden and add lots of compost to the soil. By adding compost to the soil, even if you add 5% of compost to the soil, it is said that moisture is retained by four times. So the, uh, the compost that you add to the soil will help in retaining the moisture. And then uh, again, watering, you don't use the flooding type of uh, this and you use the watering can, then you'll use a limited amount of water instead of hose pipes and the smaller um, mugs and all you can use for watering. Then you can plant vegetables that use a lot of water uh, close to each other so that you don't have to water separate plots with uh, heavy water and then, so at least uh, that's how you can utilize uh, water in a better way and say water water is one of the major problems that everybody is facing now and uh, we we have we have to try and save as much as possible so innovations in technology management this is what uh, dr kishore uh, spoke about he said this technology uh, management and iot's uh, in the international uh, airport so even in growing of vegetables we have these digital technologies or what we call as iot's or internet of things it is simply means that uh, internet uh, takes care of uh, things here. And it is, there are two machines that are uh, converted where the data is collected and transferred via internet uh, for further analysis. So here I have put in some pictures where uh, for vegetable cultivation they have used, you have these uh, robots. Uh, the robots can be used for uh, transplanting your pl uh, plants. Robots can be used for weeding the garden. Uh, robots can be uh, used uh, uh, to pull out infected plants. Then you have the sensors, handheld sensors are there, which will tell you how much of water is there, uh, humidity is there, what is the temperature, what are the light conditions. And, and then you can uh, transfer that uh, through the internet, that information gets transferred and automatically uh, certain things uh, will, uh, will operate here. Then you have the uh, drones. You have the aerial drones as well as drones on the floor for mapping, for surveying and for spraying, for all such things. Uh, drones are being used. Uh, so uh, drones are, can even tell you how much of, uh, how much yield you are going to get. Because uh, see in vertical gardening, you cannot go up and see. So the drones do a lot of work here in vertical farming. They will tell you what is the situation of the upper layers of the uh, plants. Uh, then you have these um, uh, the computers are kept directly to monitor the plants. The lights are managed. 
here you see short day length uh, plants are there that time you, you need to create darkness and uh, there are some plants that need a uh, long day length so all these can be manipulated these days because of the technology that is available and uh, digital technologies are helping man to manipulate so many things uh, in uh, nature like uh, when i talk about ornamental plants we talk about these points such as kalanchos and uh, chrysanthemums which are highly photoperiodic plants and the greenhouse conditions or these uh, conditions are being manipulated uh, to bring them to flower similarly to uh, to bring the vegetables to uh, produce they can manipulate all these um, water i mean uh, sorry the light uh, humidity temperature and such things so digital technology has are playing a major role in uh, vegetable production these days and all these uh, can be used in urban areas so innovations in market management so you grow a lot of vegetables and then uh, maybe if it's for home consumption then you just give your neighbors sometimes you give your neighbors and your leftover so you can uh, sell them or some of you may want to grow completely for commercial purposes so what are all the different ways of uh, selling people there are apps now uh, app based selling can happen so there are some uh, people who are growing vegetables and they have a group of uh people you can go to the app and select what vegetable you want and they will deliver it to your house you have these app based selling in all of these um, things like uh, namdaris and all these what are those nature basket and such people also have the app based selling so individuals if you grow also you can have the apps for selling your products then you can have the farmers market where the growers themselves will go and uh, sell them so that they get directly uh, the profits and not through intermediaries then this concept of pick your vegetables is there i have seen it in the us and all it's uh, very common that you go and pick your fruits and your uh, vegetables so that also can be uh, taken advantage of and you can have it here i've heard that they have it here also that they, they decide that uh, for example 100 rupees or 200 rupees per kg you can pick any vegetable you want wait and pay for that and go so that way people like to do that because they get the pleasure of picking their own vegetables the freshness is there uh, so uh, that is one way of marketing your vegetables then for urban garden tourism now you see the, the many children do not know where they get their like they say children you ask where do you get your milk from they say from the packets or from the bottles so similarly they may not have seen a tomato plant or a chili plant so urban uh, garden tourism is also becoming popular and uh, you can uh, exhibit your plants and also allow them to uh, pick up then there is contract farming so you have a tie up with some hotel or somebody who is ready to take your uh, vegetables and of course you can have the on farm sales these again i have seen in the us where they have a few eggs uh, or uh, some vegetables what they have grown here also we see on the highway and all sometimes uh, the uh, mango grows the, they say mangoes available for sale so direct from the farm everybody feels a good buying from the farm gate itself rather than it going to market and coming there so this is another way of how you can uh, uh, sell your products these are some innovations in market management so innovations in resource management resource management here i have shown you how kitchen wet waste or municipal waste to be uh, composted at home scale you can have kitchen wa uh, wet waste uh, now you see even the uh, municipalities and corporations are collecting wet waste and dry waste as uh, uh, separate and on a large scale also composting is being done then leaf litter and other biomass can be converted to uh, compost here you can see one of the pictures uh, where the leaf litter is being uh, uh, collected people are collecting from the road sides also the leaf litter uh, other than what you get in your garden so that also can be converted to compost instead of burning it often you see um, the municipality workers themselves uh, who are cleaning the roads in the morning who burn the uh, leaf litter so they can best be utilized for preparing a uh, compost and use of recycled water again this is also um, being practiced in big cities where uh, apartment complexes and here in ubli dharar we also have these um, in the stm 
medical college and all where water is being recycled and that water itself is being used for uh, gardening purpose. So uh, nowadays they have sort of made it compulsory also I think uh, in places like Bangalore that uh, the apartment complexes and all make arrangements for recycling the water and the water of course is used for gardening only. Then to avoid all agrochemicals, fertilizers uh, and pesticides you can prepare your own. You have these uh, Jeevamruta Panchagavya or some uh, bio pesticides with some uh, uh, leaves, maybe lantana leaves, adatoda leaves. So you can prepare the, the bio pesticides. It is best to avoid any sort of agrochemicals. Then we have the rainwater harvesting. Rainwater harvesting uh, also should be taken up uh, in the urban areas to the maximum. Uh, it has been made compulsory for new buildings to have it, but even the old ones. Because I see in my own compound how the water runs off during the rainy season and we fall short of it in the uh, summer. So rainwater should be harvested to the maximum. So this is how we can have innovations in resource management. So I thought I'll give you an example of this tropical farms, which is a startup in uh, urban farming. And in fact, after I was invited to give a talk, I thought... Uh, how can I talk without uh, actually going and seeing something like that? So I went and visited this farm and uh, he, he's a son of a family friend who has started this uh, startup in uh, urban farming. So th they are, uh, they are, uh, it is called as uh, tropical farms. They set up small units for you depending upon the, your requirements. They set up this poly houses or uh, uh, greenhouses. Uh, they st uh, set it up uh, for you and uh, see on a terrace also it is there it is at a small scale level for a home scale level also they have been they have just started it but uh, they have already um, set up so many units in uh, Hubli Darwad they are, uh, they are based in Hubli Darwad Hubli Darwad, Belgaum, uh, Bagalkot and all nearby places about 40 units they have already set up uh, of different uh, sizes and uh, depending upon the requirements. So the innovative thing is that uh, they say they have a different type of uh, poly house which is easily you can dismantle and uh, reuse it at another place and there's some ventilation and all they have given. Uh, so this is how they are taking up uh, setting up of these uh, poly houses. They not only set up the poly houses but they uh, take up the responsibility of monitoring the growth. They give them the seeds, the seedlings, and then they will monitor the growth. And of course, it will be charged depending upon how many times the visit is made. And they have used IOTs also, where uh, you can sit in your house and monitor and see uh, whether water is required, whether fertilizer is required, and you can uh, activate those things like remote control. And uh, yes, of course, when I went, uh, they just just two three days back I went there to visit and they just uh, transplanted uh, some uh, chrysanthemums and so I did not take that uh, could not take the pictures there some more pictures of what they have already done so they just harvested all these and it being summer there wasn't much so these are some of the crops they have uh, grown so you can see lettuce and uh, chrysanthemum flowers also uh, because of uh, the poly houses and all, they have minimum pest attack and all. And uh, in fact, they had given me some flowers and they had such good keeping quality and such perfectly formed flowers were also there. Uh, so these are some of the vegetables and this is a startup. So many people are doing uh, such things and uh, coming up with new and innovative ideas. They set it up on for individuals as well as for maybe for a hotel. So they told me that, that this particular one which I visited was meant for a, a hotel. They have leased land from somewhere else, from somebody else paying rent to the land and they will establish this for the hotel and grow vegetables required uh, by the uh, hotel depending upon what vegetables they want. They may be exotic vegetables like uh, broccoli and these uh, lettuce. Uh, so they will grow the vegetables as per the requirements of their uh, five-star hotels or whichever star hotels uh, they are catering to. The hotel person will invest in the uh, in all these uh, uh, structures and pay them uh, to monitor and uh, give back the 
vegetables. So this is uh, one startup and there are many such star startups that have uh, started in uh, recent years and they are uh, into this uh, urban uh, farming. So here we have flowers and vegetables. So I can conclude by telling you what are the advantages of urban gardening. So this picture, uh, what I have put here of this man uh, is uh, from uh, Hubli. I had visited it myself and he's growing so many vegetables, fruits, ornamentals. In fact, he gave me three to four varieties of fruits what he's grown on this terrace. He gave me some passion fruit juice. He gave some uh, burr fruit and uh, star fruit for tasting. Uh, so he's growing these vegetables and they put this shade net. Some of them put the shade net uh, during summers only and remove it at uh, other times. So shade net just serves the purpose that uh, uh, from harsh weather it will protect your uh, plants. So the advantages of this urban gardening is that I've already told you it, it nearly 15 times more of uh, production is there when compared to the conventional agriculture for the same area. That is 20 kgs of food, food per year uh, per square meter is produced in uh, urban gardening. It is environmental friendly, urban lifestyle, mentally and uh, physically also. Uh, it is good for you. Uh, studies have shown that having greenery around you uh, can keep you relaxed and stress-free. And that is one of the uh, treatments also they suggest uh, for those who are uh, stressed to have greenery around you and that's why they suggest you have some plants in the office or in the house or surrounding you and physically also when you're involved in gardening uh, you exercise all the parts of your body you have to bend down you have to sit you have to be in a squatting position and you work in the sun you get the vitamin d nowadays many people are deficit in vitamin d and they're taking uh, supplements for that so if you are into gardening then definitely you are spending a few hours in the uh, sunlight so it's good for you uh, for um, for mental uh, peace as well as uh, for your um, for physical well-being also then it increases the food security access and affordability of nutritious and safe food as you all know you're not sure uh, what has been sprayed when you buy from outside in fact once uh, when i was interacting with uh, uh, some uh, vegetable growers, they told me that they have a different patch what they grow for their home consumption without uh, pesticides. But for sales, they have a patch, they, they are growing with uh, uh, pesticides. Uh, so here, when you have your own garden, you know what you're uh, getting, that it is uh, safe food, it is nutritious. And when you grow your own vegetables, you tend to consume more than what you would have if you would have to buy them. Uh, so then... Uh, yeah, it also helps to connect, socialize with like-minded people, creates a self uh, sense of belonging. So here I can give you best example is uh, the plant swap that I'm having these days. I already had uh, two plant swaps. I built a community of uh, garden enthusiasts and plant lovers. Uh, we have a WhatsApp group and where we uh, connect with each other. And, uh, you know, I find it surprising that without knowing each other, we connect so quickly with one another because of the uh, like-mindedness that we have. And uh, when I had the recent plant swap, that was hardly 10 days back or something, uh, one, one of the uh, participants or friends uh, she brought a bag full of homegrown uh, brinjals from our garden. So I thought, why not you have uh, vegetable swapping meats also. You, you bring what you have grown. I bring what I have grown. We exchange it. And uh, in fact, in a plant swap, they usually say that you have to give something in return, which is of the same value. But here, uh, like I said, uh, people like-minded people to connect and to socialize and nobody was very bothered about what was the cost of anything so she brought a big bag full of brinjals and just gave it free she just kept it there for people to uh, collect them so uh, you can have this vegetable swap also then uh, produce a safe pesticide healthy and fresh food then the pleasure of uh, harvesting your own food is there it provides a learning opportunity so there are lots of uh, trial and error and failures and all when you're doing so it provides you an opportunity to uh, learn also then it makes efficient use of land and other resources recycling principles in practice at home scale also you can uh, best recycle all your uh, resources 
And uh, when you sell them, it also becomes supplementary incomes for families. Even if you don't sell, you get the pleasure of uh, sharing your produce with your uh, neighbors or your uh, friends. So there are many advantages to uh, urban gardening. I'm sure none are like uh, not affected by greenery around them. Everybody uh, feels happy and you feel uh, good when you uh, see greenery around you. So that is one of the greatest advantage. Innovations uh, of urban gardening or the urban vegetable gardening. And I thought I'll show you some pictures of the recent plant. And so I, I also call it vegetable swap here. Of course, nobody else brought vegetables. But here in the center photo, you can see a white bag. It was filled with uh, brinjols. So, so many in the midst of summer, when we know that not many uh, plants are there for exchange, just to keep the movement going, we had this plant swap some 10 days back. And I was surprised that uh, uh, 50 at least uh, uh, people uh, gathered there for the plant swap. You can see the whole gathering here. We had the pla first plant swap in uh, October. Then it was, of course, the, the ideal time when everybody has propagated their plants. Uh, so everybody is waiting now for the next uh, plant swap, which will happen maybe in July or August something. So this is also, I thought, an innovative idea. And I thought I'll share it with you. So that's it whatever little knowledge I have, I think I've shared uh, with you. And um, I'm passionate about uh, uh, gardening, whether it is ornamental plants or vegetable plants. Like I said, it makes everyone happy to be around with uh, greenery. Thank you. Thank you very much for such a uh, very important, relevant topic, ma'am. I have my friend, um, uh, Madam Amita, <clears throat> Uh, she is a very proud mother of a very innovative child. He has a charity by his name, Aryan. He is creating solutions for the visually challenged. And uh, both she and you went to Vietnam to receive awards. Mm -hmm. And uh, she felt so happy that you are presenting because she knew how you speak and present. And uh, all the attendees today would empathize uh, with whatever you spoke. Apart from the mere aspect of urban gardening, socializing, connecting, and also individual health, uh, when you're exposed to sunlight, uh, vitamins you get, and also physical health improvement. And uh, the whole world has challenges to solve, and it is a right step in the positive direction. That is, uh, the World uh, Food uh, Agriculture Organization has already predicted there will be food crisis and there are so many conflicts in the world. And climate change, uh, we have uh, um, uh, every country has to stand in front of the rest of the community. Uh, COP29 will happen and uh, so all these approaches will definitely keep India in the right uh, position to defend that we are carbon neutral and carbon zero, net zero kind of um, ecosystem. You told us to not to waste water. There will be water crisis in future. So I think uh, there will be some questions. I, I would like attendees to ask, uh, unmute and uh, ask questions. I would also open the chat box to read out for. So our uh, our team has meanwhile kept uh, tomorrow's topic, which is uh, like a natural extension of today's uh, discussion that is about vegetables in Telugu by Sri Venkat Ramnagaru. <clears throat> and uh, don't, don't worry, even if you don't know Telugu, attend it, because much of the text will be in English and you will relate with it. Language is not a barrier for Indians. And there is a channel here, WhatsApp channel. If you subscribe, you will come to know all of our dialogues and other activities. And so do that. And also feedback form will come up. You can fill that. And uh, people are, yes, there is a feedback form, forms.gle. Just uh, it will take two, three minutes to fill in. It will help you to get uh, registered in our database. You will get a certificate of participation. And I will just ask, uh, yes, uh, what's going on? So, right, recording. Okay, there is uh, no, nothing problem. So, we just waited initially a couple of minutes for attendees to join. Any questions, please feel free to ask now. People appreciate your speech, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, very informative I session. I, I forgot to mention one more thing. 
I, like you mentioned, I am a regular blogger on, uh, of course, only restricted to WhatsApp. And I also have my YouTube channel. Uh, so if you want more information, you can always visit my channel. My garden, my passion. Yes, so is, that's mentioned I'm here. About my garden and uh, the, my channel name is apt for it as my garden, my passion. So I have uh, developed videos and uh, on, on a small size, uh, home scale level, uh, vertical uh, garden also, and uh, such things that are useful. Why why the name indoor plants came or what are oxygen giving plants? Is it a myth or a fact? And such uh, things I have covered. And uh, so people who are interested can subscribe to the channel and watch the videos. Yes, ma'am. There is also an endorsement of what you just mentioned. Amog uh, Bialal says that, good evening, ma'am. Thank you for truly enlightening and inspiring talk and uh, your insights are absolutely fantastic and left us all feeling inspired and motivated i must express my gratitude as a regular viewer of your wonderful youtube channel my garden my passion your uh, channel has been a constant source of knowledge and inspiration for me and uh, tonight's talk further depend uh, deepened my admiration of your work special thanks also to katie wala for bringing in his esteemed speaker like yourself and so like this appreciation messages uh, any questions we would like you to ask now one more appreciation by dr um, uh, maloti g and very informative thank you ma'am i can i get support of my technical students studying in engineering yes this is interesting that agriculture hitherto was considered a very uh, only those who are in agriculture university to bother right now engineering students using iot as you mentioned ma'am they are all excited about uh, the this technology and it's interesting I that they are engineering showing engineering college students visiting the agriculture university and many of them are working with the scientists here uh, for, uh, on how to use the technology for uh, in agriculture thank you so much ma'am as a token of gesture of appreciation this is uh, for you and we would meet you in person and hand it over okay. and also you will get a letter of appreciation from our uh, admin team they're good in iot yeah dr aruna is also saying yes i do keep uh, interacting with uh, electronics communication computer science students and iot at ieee events we always discuss a lot about sensors and uh, sensor fusion and uh, wireless sensor networks and interesting that you brought out those um, aspects in the discussion uh, anything else that uh, we have to do organizers please do check we have time we'll wait for another three minutes and then uh, see we can yeah. uh, one quick question yeah dr gopinath sir namaste welcome to namaste. the program so all looks green you know uh, cultivation and uh, today practically most of the vegetables are adulterated some uh, identify some they don't do extremely bad and i also work in the area of ayurveda so i know what uh the health impacts of that so it's it's a, it's a, probably in some day it will become an essential you know skill to uh, be able to produce our own uh, food if not everything at least a vegetable spark so definitely very contemporary and very relevant topic and but uh, once we everything looks green but when you go into the work you know we find some problem for example snakes how would you handle snakes maybe we have plants and all the pots around on how to handle snakes <laughs> I, in my compound, I can tell you I have two two big snakes. They come and go by themselves. We are a little careful. Since it's a very big compound, we have uh, snakes, we have mongoose, we have civets, we have monkeys, all sorts of birds and uh, snakes. Um, fortunately, we have not had any accidents. Now, almost on a regular basis, we know the path they are crossing also. We have to be a little careful. But uh, um, I don't think uh, that's the major issue what you're uh, talking. And everybody has clean cultivation these days. People hardly have uh, this. Where will snakes come from in this mine is because it's a old compound. Especially when you talk about vegetables, you know, the rats will come for the vegetables and then will, uh, and that will follow the by snakes the snakes. And most of them okay. probably, you should say that in there are not poisonous, most of them. Yeah, maybe. So what snakes I have in my compound, I don't know whether I'm not not much knowledgeable, but they are big in size and that's all I know. And they're not cobra, that's all. And the additional advantage of uh, our own garden is no need for packing material. As uh, it has been uh, researched upon, 
when you order a pizza or a something from Swiggy or Zomato, your leftover food you throw it along with the packing material, and then I think the birds and other animals they don't have access to it. So since we and also packing adds to more of the waste that we need to handle, uh, and uh, by by this kind of approach you almost nullify that requirement of packing. And there is a vision that uh, people can do shopping in future, go around just like a super bazaar and pick and pluck their own fruits or flowers, and it gets uh, built automatically and uh, using technology, and then they just can carry those things, and uh, so no need for uh, too much packing. And uh, this is also urban gardening contributes to that in that positive direction. In fact, I'm happy Dr. Gopinath joined. He's a professor in uh, physics, uh, Vellur Institute of Technology, Chennai. And Chennai, Tamil Nadu has been mentioned by Dr. Um, Shobhan Agnur. Uh, I also heard same from Dr. Bala, sir. Um, there are so many areas in Chennai where uh, people will give you lots of saplings, almost nil price. You just need to carry them and then grow them. And this is all done in the interest of environment and uh, global objective of uh, climate uh, challenges and uh, increasing the green cover. I found a lot of things like uh, people are afraid of Tamil Nadu. It is very suffocating or uh, the, the ocean is there nearby in Chennai. But I found a lot of live lakes and a garden city where I live, Bangalore, our lakes are dwindling. Our green cover, as per a study report of Indian Institute of Science today, we are just left with 7% of greenery now because of urbanization. And then the only, only the challenge we can cover is take the greenery from the ground to the roof, as the Dr. Nagnur explained, and then continue our green coverage of the city. Sir, uh, could you throw some light uh, about the uh, VIT's efforts in green uh, entire campus? I've seen the campus, very busy campus. This campus was designed to be green campus from the beginning, you know, to choose the right plants and right trees to maintain the ecosystem, not to disturb the ecosystem because of construction. That's why it's called green campus. And uh, so coming, uh, I mean, coming away from the campus, actually, even I, I am a secretary of association here where uh, nearly 1,000 uh, units of uh, uh, flats are there. So I'm seriously thinking about how to bring in this one. So yeah, as you nicely mentioned, you know, the waste management is very close to, to this one. So the, the waste we are unable to recycle because the food is mixed with, uh, with the packaging material. If, if the food can be segregated, it's been happening in the city, but they... We segregate and again they mix it and then they burn it or they dump it in the same place. So we dump everything thinking that somebody will separate, somebody will compost. But actually if, if apartments take up, if the if urban people take it up and then compost, segregate and compost in the same place and use it for the garden, we create that ecosystem in our place. And amazing, I'm working on that. And, uh, hopefully in another one or two years, I'll, with all the help from the... Uh, the discussions that are happening here hopefully i can make it happen yes sir and also as ma'am said how to conserve water like today we had a incidence that our water filter had a problem they removed the uh, water filter and then motor and then they said for five minutes let it run so a lot of water uh, which is actually processed uh, which can be very useful for plants we just drained off but uh, we we can just follow instruction what ma'am said. You collect in a bucket and then use it for the plants. So we do have a rooftop garden, but um, now we will be more cautious and then more uh, water uh, sensitive and then uh, consume very. Yes, sir. lots of things are related water management, waste management, yes. and then our, our yes, sir. being able to produce our own pure foods and oil is a wonderful thing. Thank, Thank you me. very much, uh, Dr. Um, Nagnur and uh, thanks Dr. Gopinath for presence. Uh, if there are not many more questions, we would uh, we would conclude. Uh, let me just do a last minute check. Yes, uh, there's a question from Dr. Aruna. Uh, she needs uh, Dr. Um, Nagnur's uh, contact number. Uh, if you could feed back, uh, you would be in touch with us and uh, you can keep interacting with us. Otherwise, ma'am is uh, available. She will answer. Dr. Aruna, you may want to speak as well. You are welcome to do so. Okay, Dr. Aruna would like to just have the contact number of uh, the speaker of the day. Um, ah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Aruna is unable to speak due to the traveling. So, ma'am, you, uh, you could probably type in the message of your contact to them. Our organizers can support if the people can share their email IDs 
and also their contact numbers in the way of filling the feedback form and with a note to us to provide the contact of uh, Dr. Uh, Shobha Nagnur. After seeking her consent, we will share the details to you. If there are no more questions, then uh, extremely delighted to be a moderator today this evening, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir.